But Madam Speaker, my great regret is that we have not yet started to build the parish court complexes that we had hoped would have started. But we hope, Madam Speaker, that the Manchester court can be started, if not within the next 12 to 18 months. And we are also trying to get St. Anne Trelawney, St. Catherine, St. James it to, to be shovel ready so that when the funds are ready, we can immediately implement them. And I know, Madam Speaker, that the member from in front of me, Maypen, up to today, I spoke to the Minister of Finance whether we can put that in place, and we are hoping that later this year, because everything has now been worked out, Member, member um, from Maypen, and we are hoping that later this year we can actually start the program. But everything is in place, and so we hope that will happen. Madam Speaker, the justice centres across the island are being improved, all the justice facilities. And Madam Speaker, since I've been Minister of Justice, what I can tell you, you don't hear of courts being breaking down. And the reason, Madam Speaker, is that we ensure that the facilities are maintained. And uh, Madam Speaker, every May, including the beginning of yesterday, I asked the Court Administration Division to confirm that every air condition, elevator, um, other electronic equipment have been maintained or serviced since the beginning of the year because the summer period is coming up and it's heat in the courts. And if any air condition breaks down, the court will have to be locked down. But what I can say for the last two years, and I hope this year, that no court will break down because any equipment has broken down. The truth, Madam Speaker, is that maintenance is a very important part of court efficiency. <laughs> Things must be maintained, and I hate to use a few minutes to make this point, Madam Speaker. I'm trying to tell the court staff, you need to maintain everything. I go down and put in brand new elevators at the Supreme Court, Madam Speaker. After a year and a half, I went down there. I say to one of the property managers, when last have you maintained this court, this elevator? And he looked at me, Madam Speaker, and said, what in a breakdown yet, sir? <laughs> and this is the problem in this country, Madam Speaker. We maintain nothing. We wait until they break down. And it's necessary not only in the courts, but across all justice sector, all sectors of the government building, we need to maintain everything so that they can last. Madam Speaker, I need to touch on a few other agencies before time runs out. The Administrator General's Department, Madam Speaker, is one of the shining departments of the Ministry of Justice. During the course of the last year, they closed 434 estates and passed on the, transferred all the assets to the beneficiaries, exceeding their target of 400. 350 new estate cases came to the department. And Madam Speaker, they are working efficiently and expect to close over 800 estates this year. And I certainly hope that that will be done. Madam Speaker, the Legal Aid Council is doing yeoman service in ensuring that persons who need legal assistance, legal aid as they call it, actually get legal aid. And Madam Speaker, this is one minister who can say that every legal aid attorney or every attorney doing legal aid, that they get their money. We don't owe anybody any. This minister ensure, this minister ensure that the debts are paid. Every February, Madam Speaker, for the last three years, I've been looking at the ministry's financial area and say, what money you have there, let us make sure we do, don't finish the financial year without our debts being paid. So I can tell you, Madam Speaker, we don't owe any judgment debt. We pay them up. And Madam Speaker, around February, March, we have to be begging the contractors, send in your certificate yes. because we have money. Yes. And Madam Speaker, this is how this minister intends to operate, make persons feel confident that they can deal with the Ministry of Justice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the Office 
of the public prosecution have contributed significantly to the Ministry's mandate of protecting the constitutional rights and freedoms of our citizens. The DPP and her team were able to dispose of more than 1,200 cases across the various circuits and gun courts island-wide. Adding to their excellent track record of delivering effective and just prosecutions in criminal proceedings. In November 2020, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution partnered with the Jamaica Constabulary Force to launch a training video entitled Digital Police in Criminal Investigations in the Technological Era. That explores the three investigative tools available to the police under the Cyber Crimes Act. This training tool, Madam Speaker, will assist them to gather computer material for any criminal offence and enhance their capacity to use their investigative powers under the Act. Madam Speaker, the DPP and the JCF are working very closely and in partnership to ensure that cases are dealt with expeditiously. I would like to thank Madam Speaker, the United Kingdom Department of International Development, DFID, for providing the justice system with more funding to support and strengthen our prosecutorial services. Madam Speaker, it is now and should be known that the, all the clerk of courts will be brought under the DPP. In other words, the prosecution in the parish courts, the clerk of courts will now be prosecutors, not clerk of courts. So they will probably be known as assistant crown counsel and they will come under the jurisdiction of the DPP are no longer under the parish court judge. And they basically, Madam Speaker, with the help of DFID, who is providing the consultant to, to make sure that is done, we can get better efficiency in completing prosecution in the parish courts. Madam Speaker, there's one area which I urge the DPP to address, and that is the question of plea agreement and negotiations. The truth of the matter, Madam Speaker, is that once a file is completed and ready for trial, as is the practice in the United States, where some 90% of cases are completed by plea bargaining, the prosecution should engage defense attorneys to bargain the completion of the case by a lesser charge and or a lower sentence. Naturally, Madam Speaker, for serious matters, the sentence has to be within the normal range and at the higher level, as I pointed out earlier, taking note that both charge and sentence would have to be approved by the presiding judge. Madam Speaker, the Plea Negotiations and Agreements Act is one which I think is not being fully utilized, and I am urging prosecutors to give more attention to plea bargaining to reduce the backlog in the courts. Madam Speaker, this leads me to return again to the matter of sentences. I have heard the cry of our people that some of the sentences being imposed for certain offences are mere slaps on the wrists of criminal offenders, given the serious nature of their crimes. However, Madam Speaker, I strongly believe that after a guilty verdict, there should be a sentence hearing, where the sentencing judge hears presentations from both the prosecution and defence attorneys before imposing sentence. Regrettably, Madam Speaker, in most cases, it's only the defense attorneys who make a plea. But I do believe that the concerns and feelings of the victims and the families of the victims should also be taken into consideration by the trial judge before sentence is imposed. Because if that is not done, Madam Speaker, the right of appeal, which we will be coming to with shortly, will not, will be utilized too much. So it's important that both the prosecution and the defense make their presentation and the judge so decide. Madam Speaker, in the area that the Ministry of Justice is responsible for is legislation. And in truth, Madam Speaker, there are many pieces of legislation which are basically tied up, moving like ring a ring of roses between the Ministry, AG's office, CPC, various agencies giving information. People believe that legislation is easy. But the truth of the matter, Madam Speaker, it moves around the mulberry bush before it actually comes to me at legislation committee in order for it to be approved and actually tabled in the House. The truth, Madam Speaker, is that I am working assiduously on these legislation and all the ministries are being contacted almost on a weekly basis 
to see where the legislations are. And in this fiscal year, Madam Speaker, I have no doubt that we will have many, many more pieces of legislation coming to this Parliament. For the Ministry of Justice, we have this right of appeal. And as I indicated, the criminal records um, for expungement. And Madam Speaker, another area which will come to us here shortly is a mediation act. Because a mediation act is absolutely important to operate not only commercially, in the courts, but also in the communities, Madam Speaker. Far too many communities engage in conflicts which can be settled by restorative justice and our mediation. And I certainly hope, Madam Speaker, that when we roll out mediation and, con and further roll out restorative justice, that persons within the communities, our families, our gangs, can utilize them in order to settle their differences rather than to engage in abuses and violence. Madam Speaker, there's so much that could be dealt with, but as I indicated, we are doing human service at the Ministry of Justice, ensuring that justice is delivered to the people of Jamaica. Not only do we have mobile buses, three of them now, that can go into communities. So, members of parliament, if you know of a community that need a bus to visit so that your member can have face to face, we have these mobile buses, just book them. There's no doubt, Madam Speaker, that during the past year, because of the pandemic, it has been downsized. But the truth is that we can do it virtually so that members can come to the constituency office, and I hope all of you now have virtual in your constituency office, and talk with a lawyer who is in the mobile bus. And so this sort of discussion can take place virtually. So the individual who need legal advice in the community can make contact with the mobile bus, Madam Speaker, and an opportunity can be arranged for legal service to be done virtually, because we have the opportunity for to deliver service across Jamaica without your constituents having to come to a lawyer or come to the Ministry of Justice or even at this time for the bus to go there. But sure, we will also want eventually for the buses to come to your constituency office or come to various churches or communities in order to deliver justice services. Madam Speaker, let me conclude. The team at the Ministry of Justice has faithfully discharged their duties as the lead administrators of justice in Jamaica. I have been impressed by their agility and dedication as they responded to the demands of the pandemic and continued to deliver efficient customer service to justice stakeholders across the island. In particular, I take this opportunity to acknowledge the stellar work of the Ministry's Finance and Accounts Division as it relates to the settlement of judgment debts. In 2020-2021, fiscal year 646 million was paid out in a settlement of 176 matters. We continue to execute due process for sums awarded in the course of justice, as this is a true indicator of a first-class justice system. Madam Speaker, my team and I have approached this new fiscal year with confidence and a deep commitment to play our part to foster safe, cohesive, and a just society. For now, we will continue to virtually provide those services and support that cannot be done in person. But, Madam Speaker, to quote local singer Coffee, when the quarantine thing done and everybody touch road, we are primed and ready to continue to take justice to the people, land we love. So, Madam Speaker, a lot has been accomplished. A lot more needs to be said. Very shortly, we will be handing over the Director of Public Prosecution Offices, which will be a first-class facility to the DPP. You may have seen some pictures, Madam Speaker, we are visiting the DPP's office. And she's so pleased to say, when you're going to give everything to me. <laughs> and I suspect, Madam Speaker, by July or August this year, we will have it all over to her. I want to thank you, members of Parliament, for your attention.